Welcome to Deep Sky Imaging for the SJAA Astro Imaging Workshops. I want to thank Daniel Coe at www.astronomylog.co.uk. 95% of this material came from a presentation he did and I thought it was very well done and asked him for permission to use it and he kindly sent me the PowerPoint slide so I could update it for uh, SJAA. So this is about deep sky imaging and that's in contrast to other types of astro imaging such as nightscapes where you just have a camera and a lens on a tripod. Uh, maybe those are time lapse. Maybe you have a, a tracking device versus a full-on telescope mount uh, to track the stars. Other types are putting your camera and lens piggyback on a telescope mount to do maybe wide field. There's also planetary where you're taking pictures of, of solar system objects like the moon and Jupiter and Saturn and whatnot. And those generally involve some type of video, whether it's a webcam, DSLR using live view or, or video, or an actual video camera on a telescope. And that's a very different approach compared to deep sky because you're doing what's called lucky imaging, where you're trying to take as many frames as possible and then hoping that you'll get a few where Earth's atmosphere was clear over a given section of the object that you're imaging and then you sort of stack all those those up. And also planetary is different in that you typically have a lot of magnification, a high focal ratio, you're using Barlow's or maybe even eyepiece projection to get a lot of magnification. And again that's very different from deep sky where you're typically trying to get a low F ratio uh, so you can have shorter exposures. Also, there's wide field. The setup for wide field, at least assuming you know a camera on a telescope, is very similar or the same as deep sky, but it's just that you have a wider field of view, so you're taking up a wider piece of the sky than zooming in, so to speak, on a nebula or something like you see here in the upper right. That's the Orion Nebula. So again, the focus is on deep sky, and that uses something called prime focus. So this is where you've got a DSLR or a uh, CCD camera, and the telescope simply replaces the camera lens. Another way to look at it is if you've got a, a telescope and an eyepiece, the camera is replacing the eyepiece on the telescope. And that also means that the camera is going at what's called the prime focus of the telescope. The first place where the, the image comes to focus is the, the prime focus on the telescope. And again, as I mentioned, it probably means that you're shooting for a low focal ratio, maybe even using a focal reducer to both increase the field of view, but mainly to get a lower F ratio so that your exposures can be shorter. Two types of cameras that are typically used for deep sky, DSLRs and CCD imagers. And there's a couple examples of brands, Canon being probably the most popular for astrophotography and DSLRs. And there's a whole range of prices and features on CCD cameras that you can choose from as well. So if we look at what are the differences between a DSLR and CCD camera, uh, DSLRs are typically less expensive. You can also use them for other purposes, which we'll call you know, terrestrial. You take pictures of stuff during the day. They have a big chip size. They're you know, either crop sensor or full frame. And compared to most CCD chips, those are quite a bit uh, a larger and that also helps you get a larger field of view. 
Uh, you can operate them without a computer. Typically you need something to make exposures longer than 30 seconds, so you probably need a, an intervalometer if you're not going to use a computer, which is just a device that plugs into the remote shutter jack and in bulb modes holds the shutter open for longer than 30 seconds. You get a color image in a single shot, which is both an advantage and a disadvantage. It's simple, you've got color. You don't need color filters as you do with the monochrome, but it also means that it's pretty impractical to do things like narrow band imaging where you're using very, well, narrow band uh, filters to get just a particular emission line that nebulas typically have. Because the DSLR already has a color filter, it has what's called a Bayer matrix. So each pixel on the DSLR has got a little color filter in front of it, either red, green, or blue. And they're in a, in a square pattern where there's two greens, a blue and a red, in a square. That's all optimized for terrestrial photography. Some of the disadvantage, they're typically not cooled unless they've been modified, and thermal heat equals noise in camera sensors. They have a limited sensitivity because they have an infrared blocking filter. If you just took a CMOS sensor by itself, which is what's used in DSLRs, they're, they're more sensitive in the red and, and IR end of the spectrum than they are in the green and the blue. And so to make it come out more like the response of the human eye, the manufacturers, in, in addition to that Bayer matrix, they put an infrared blocking filter and that cuts down on the response in the IR and the, and the deep red. That's undesirable for astrophotography because a lot of what you're trying to take, and for deep field anyway, deep sky uh, of nebulas is uh, infrared light or these emission lines I mentioned before, the, such as H-alpha and sulfur-2, are both pretty deep in the, in the red end of the spectrum. And a stock DSLR with its IR blocking filter is going to be filtering some of that, that light out. They're hard to focus in terms of uh, stars, uh, just using the, the viewfinder or the LCD screen. There are some ways around that. You can even use uh, a magnifying glass and you can, your camera, newer cameras have a zoom on the LCD. So you can go 5x or 10x on that and then maybe have a, a jeweler's loop or a little magnifying glass to even look a little closer. But typically what we do with the DSLRs is we operate them from a computer and then there's aids with the computer and masks, batten off masks, etc. to help with the, with the focusing. They're typically battery operated and there's two problems with, with batteries in DSLRs. One is the act of discharging the battery to operate the camera produces extra heat and as we said before heat is your your enemy in a camera for low noise and so typically you'd, you'd want to eliminate that by replacing the battery with a external supply of some sort. Also you don't want your battery to die in the middle of the night when you're doing your, your astrophotography. So let's talk about CCD cameras. So they're typically cooled, so they have a lower sensor noise. They're already optimized for astrophotography, so they don't have an infrared filter that's blocking out some of what you want. And because they're typically monochrome, you can use them with a wide range of filters, narrowband filters, RGB filters, luminance filters, etc. There's not a competing RGB filter are already in there. There, there are one-shot color CCDs, but I, d I don't really see the, uh, the point in that. I think if you're going to spend the money on a CCD, you're much better off with, with monochrome. 
that some of the disadvantages if you do have a mono version and you want to take some sort of color image then you're going to have to put filters on it so set of filters which can be expensive uh, and also a filter wheel or some other mechanism of a filter slide or something mechanism of of moving the filters in and out they generally need a computer for operation and they're optimized for astrophotography so you're not going to be using them during the day for for anything as i said earlier the the sensor chips are typically smaller than what you're going to get in a dslr even smaller than a crop sensor and that results in lower resolution and smaller field of view there are newer larger ccd chips but they tend to be pretty expensive on oh, we, we talked a little bit before about mono versus color here we're highlighting that uh, an additional thing that we didn't talk about was that you've got greater sensitivity because there's no Bayer matrix and sometimes there's instead of a Bayer matrix they can put micro lenses in there and that helps again with the with the sensitivity and uh, H-alpha being a, an emission line in most nebulas it's at the sort of the extreme end of the red or getting into the infrared and so you're going to have more luck with with that with a ccd camera versus a stock dslr here's a little blurb about one shot color ccds is you know in that case you don't have the the filter wheels and and filters and you're going to do less processing you don't have to process the individual channels separately and then put them together but on the other hand, you can't really do narrow band and, and et cetera. So 